So, welcome to the CMC Markets uh, weekly webinar with myself, David Madden, Market Analyst at CMC Markets. The time has just gone uh, 12.18, so we're starting uh, three minutes late, but I will be, I will be uh, hopefully uh, keeping inside the half an hour uh, time limit we're, we're, we're working with here for the webinar. Uh, first things first, let's just have a quick rundown of what has been going on over the weekend. Uh, the big news out of the weekend was the Chinese second quarter GDP numbers. They came in at 6.9% for the second quarter. We were, analysts were expecting 6.8%, so uh, slightly ahead of expectations. Bearing in mind that uh, Beijing, the, Be the Beijing administration, set out a task for themselves to achieve growth rate of 6.5% throughout 2017. In Q1, we got 6.9% growth, and in Q2, uh, we, we've also had 6.9% growth. So I think it's fair to say that, that so far uh, in the first half of the year, the Chinese government is on target to meet their um, to meet their uh, target for in terms of economic growth for the year. Uh, also, what, um, some of the ramifications of the positive growth numbers out of China over the weekend have, of course, been the mining companies. Uh, China is the second largest economy in the world. They're very mineral hungry. hungry. The last number of years, uh, their growth and subsequent slowdown has been very, uh, in, has, a, has, a, has had a major impact on the metals markets. Uh, high grade copper, so on and so forth. And in turn, mining companies like Rio Tinto, BHP Billiton, Vedanta, Antifagasta, Glencore, and Anglo American have been some of the major players that have benefited from the good Chinese growth numbers over the weekend. Also, uh, kind of recapping the back end of last week, what we saw, we, we saw with some uh, mediocre and some un, uh, not, not too impressive uh, CPI numbers and, and retail sales numbers out of the US on Friday just gone. And what we saw on the back of that was a large sell-off in the US dollar. We saw pushing higher of the, the gold market. And because the numbers were soft, but not terrible, um, it kind of it was kind of in line with kind of Janet Yellen's commentary uh, at the back end of last week, whereby it was encouraging enough to think that things are still choking along, but not so hot that it would warrant an interest rate rise in the near future. So we did see a record close in the S and P 500 uh, on on Friday night in terms of the actual cash market. So in terms of what we're looking at today, mining companies are benefiting because of the Chinese Chinese data of the weekend. Which of course have the FTSE 100. Uh, we're now trading at 7,420 in the FTSE. We have seen um, not as a uh, as a bit of a mixed bag in in, in the eurozone, uh, but we are seeing we are tipped to see uh, a positive start to U.S. equity markets um, given the given the move continued positive move over the weekend. So we've got a quick brief rundown of where to uh, look what what to look out for for the major economic events of the week ahead of us. So I do it every single week, so I'm sure you, know, you already know where it is on our website, but I will just go through it again. On our website here, uh, you will see under the news and analysis section, if you scroll down into news and analysis, you find all the up updates that myself and the other analysts here at CMC do every single week. On the filter section here, click on filter and then scroll down to weekly outlook. Give us a breakdown here of the weekly earnings calendar, uh, week commencing the, the 17th of July 2017. So this is giving a breakdown of the major, both economic and also the corporate calendar for the week. So what we got for Monday, we got Netflix have their Q2 results coming out on, on uh, later on today. Uh, Goldman Sachs and Bank of America have Q2 numbers out later on Tuesday. Bearing in mind, Wells Fargo, J.P. Morgan, and Citigroup all have they had better than expected Q2 numbers out on Friday, just gone. Thursday, uh, we have a couple of central banks uh, giving us updates. Uh, central bank meeting from the Bank of Japan and also from the European Central Bank. Uh, regarding the European Central Bank, Mario Draghi uh, has been quite positive on the out in terms of his outlook for the Eurozone recently, but not so positive. If anything, he's been kind of, kind of scaling back um, his positive outlook uh, for fear it would drive the Euro a bit too high. Mr. Draghi, of course, with a very soft Euro, um, the, the weakness in the Euro over the last number of years has really helped the Eurozone economy uh, turn around and produce some good economic indicators. So keep an eye out for what Mario Draghi has to say on Thursday. We are going to be looking towards hints of potential changes to the ECB's uh, policy. Now, 
It also announced last week that Mario Draghi is going to be uh, giving a giving a presentation at the Jackson Hole Symposium next month. And bearing in mind the last time he gave a he was presenting at that particular conference, it was nearly it was just it was three years ago, and that's when he laid the groundwork for the very loose monetary policy and stimulus package that the European Central Bank uh, went went down that route. So he's widely tipped to at least start laying the groundwork for potentially uh, talking about maybe tapering in or reducing the size of the bond buying scheme that the European Central Bank currently have in place. So keep an eye out for kind of potential change of language we could see out of the European Central Bank on Thursday. Also on Thursday, from the early hours of the, of the morning, we'll have the Bank of Japan update. Uh, and seeing as the Japanese inflation rate is nowhere near, uh, is, is nowhere near uh, the Bank of the BOJ's target, uh, we probably can't expect a whole lot of change there. Uh, unlike, uh, even though we've heard some hawkish commentary from the Bank of England, certain members anyways, we've heard hawkish commentary from some Fed members, including Miss Yellen. Uh, well, positive but not overly hawkish, um, but and, and also some positive rhetoric out of the European Central Bank. It, the same cannot really be said for the Bank of Japan, uh, given that they've had a very extensive stimulus package. Inflation is still very, very low and it's still dragging its heels. So you probably won't see a whole lot of change out of the Bank of Japan. Um, also, we have, we have a couple of other um, companies reporting their figures on Thursday as well, both uh, in the UK and also the US. So turning our attention now to the kind of rundown of the major markets, what to cover. Uh, the FTSE 100 off to a good start today, uh, trading north of the 7,400 levels at 7,420. Uh, in terms of actually what to actually look out for and what notice, a lot of what I'll say in relation to the, the FTSE 100 uh, in terms of the chart, the price action we've seen is not too dissimilar to what we've seen uh, on, on the Germany 30, um, the France 40, and also the EU 50. It is encouraging to see um, that the, the positive momentum is kind of on the rise again, yet again, for the, for, for the FTSE, FTSE 100. Uh, we appear to be getting support from in around the kind of 7,400 region. Uh, keep keep in mind um, of the of the keep, be, be mindful of this price action here, 7,391, not too far away from where the 100-day moving average comes into play. And while we kind of remain north of these price action here, kind of 7,400 and 7,391, the outlook for the FTSE 100 is uh, for the UK 100 is going to continue to be bullish. Levels to watch out for to the upside, 7,000, the 50 day moving average at 7,450. And then beyond that, uh, bulls will then be looking towards 7,482. And then should we take out, should we take out that level there, we can become more confident of the bullish, uh, the bullish run that has been in place throughout 2017 can continue. Levels beyond, beyond that, uh, we'll be targeting towards the 7,600 level, the, which is basically effectively the all-time high of the FTSE 100. Turn my attention now to the Germany 30, the DAX, as it is now. The DAX, unfortunately, has been running to resistance at the 50-day moving average, and, and the last couple of sessions have been kind of re restrained by that. Now, it is encouraging to see that the positive momentum is still on the rise, so we could see another kind of an attempt on the 50-day moving average at 12,656. Uh, while we hold north of this support, this, this support area here at 12,541, uh, the outlook for, for the German 30 is going to still remain positive. And should we take out the 50-day moving average at 12,656, bulls will then be looking towards this 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 price action here of 12,733, and then beyond that, uh, we'll be looking towards 12,140, and then of course the all-time high, which comes into play from, from late June at uh, just north of 12,950. Like I was saying, the the the, the the, pri the, the, uh, the the chart structure of, of uh, a number of the major equity markets in Europe all looks a, a, a bit a bit fairly similar, whereas in the US, uh, we, we have seen a bit of the, the equity markets in the US have been in better shape in comparison with their European counterparts. The DAX hasn't been uh, as kind of push, sorry, the, the, the France 40 rather, hasn't been as pushing as, as high 
uh, as the DAX or the FTSE 100. But at the same time, it still is in, in quite good stead. It's holding north of the of the 100-day moving average at this price action here, and around the kind of 7,000, sorry, 5,177 region here, or, or 5,200. The next level to watch out for to the upside is going to be is going is going to be this this price here of 5,282, and then beyond that, the resistance at 5,373 will then be the next one for, uh, to watch out for. Should we move south of the 100-day moving average at this price here of 5,177, with the next step level to watch out for is going to be 5,111. While we remain north, even if we do have a bit of a pullback, even if it, the, provided the support has held at this price here, 5,111, the yellow lock still is going to remain, uh, broadly speaking, bullish for the France 40. As you can see here, the momentum, uh, positive momentum, uh, is uh, is gaining ground yet again for a third day in a row. And then when we sort of amalgamate those, taking a look at the Euro 50, similar price action on the Euro 50. Um, we can see for well, actually for a fourth day in a row now, we're, we're seeing that the positive that the momentum, the positive momentum is actually increasing. And as we can see, that is that is that is um, that is also um, du duplicated with a, a rising of prices from the kind of uh, from the second week in July. The, le the next level to watch out for to the upside is going to be the 50-day moving average at 3,554. Then we'll be looking towards this level, this this price action here of 3,600, and then north of that, we'll be looking towards the all-time high. Which comes into play at 3,684. Even if you do drop back below the 100-day moving average at 3,500, uh, 3, roughly, while we hold above this support area here at 3,440, the outlook for the Euro 50 is still going to remain positive. Turn our attention now to what's going on over in Japan. Bearing in mind we have the Bank of Japan update during the week, so. That's obviously going to be one to watch out for. The the, the, the Nikkei, the Japan 225, has been trading at a relatively narrowish range the last number of uh, last number of weeks. Um, we, we're still not too far away from the uh, from the high of June, but at the same time, we haven't actually drifted much lower. So while we remain north, this this price this price here, uh, the 50-day moving average just south of 20,000 at 19,959. The outlook is going to remain positive for this market. As you can see, um, it's it's already traded down through, through it once and it quickly re regained and it's been holding above that for the last number of sessions. And then the next level to watch out for to the upside is going to be 20,300 on the Nikkei 225. We're now swinging our attention over to the United States of America and we'll take a look now at the Dow Jones. A five minute chart there so we'll just uh, take a look at uh, what's happening on a much greater scale as you can see here record all-time high posted on Friday on the back of those soft CPI numbers and retail sales numbers the numbers were if you were a bull there was sort of there was something there was sort of a double whammy for you because the comments from Janet Yellen on Wednesday and Thursday were stating that the United States economy is improving which is obviously good but Miss Yellen didn't seem too rushed about and further interest rates in the near term uh, the last time I looked, uh, there is about there is less than a 50% chance of a rate hike in December. So what we have a scenario whereby the outlook it remains reasonably positive, which is obviously good for it for which is obviously good for the stock market, but not so good that it's going to actually warrant a rate rise in the near in, in the very near term. So Ms. Yellen was sort of signaling to traders that things are going to continue to move higher in terms of interest rates, but not really in the near term. So what, as soon as traders saw the uh, not overly impressive retail sales numbers and the also the inflation number uh, traders were quickly to, to jump on the buying bandwagon so we saw a printed a new all-time high for the Dow Jones on Friday the bullish sentiment is, is still very much in place a popular strategy over the last number of weeks and these sort of up, upward trends has been buying the dips so if we do see any pullbacks these are the sort of price actions we could we could look to, to revert back towards uh, the previous resistance at uh, has now become support 21,564 and south of that 21,500 itself. 
these are the sort of regions, and also 21,400. Should we see a pullback in, in, the, in the US 30, the Dow Jones? These are the sort of levels we could be looking at in terms of actual odds, in terms of uh, support regions, if you're looking to try and buy on the dip. It's also encouraging to see not only uh, do we have all-time highs, which is obviously the most important indicator of the price, but we can see here the last couple of sessions, the, the momentum has turned positive, which is obviously something also you can be more confident uh, in, in, your, in your bullish outlook should you hold one. Uh, let's now turn attention to the S&P 500. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this webinar, uh, the S&P 500 had a record high, closed at a record high on Friday, just gone. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's fairly clear, to, plain to see that the US indices are in a far better shape than that of uh, the of Europe. Very similar looking chart to what we saw on the Dow Jones record high posted on, on Friday. Uh, we're, we're seeing a small bit of uh, movement here on, in, in the early hours of trading on Monday. Not a whole lot of, of ground has been given back. Should we see any kind of moves lower in the S&P 500, uh, in the US S SPX 500, we could see a pullback to, to this, this region here of 2,452. Then traders will also be keeping an eye on the 2,447 and 2,440 region. So it's a fairly common place. A uh, popular strategy recently has been buying on the dips as the market is either moving higher, creating new highs, returning lower, only to go on to create further new highs. Similar with the Dow and some of the European uh, equities equity indices, we have seen the market, uh, the, the momentum swing positive now on a third day, and we can also see the positive momentum in terms of the, of the histogram is actually increasing, which is also adding, which is also, if you are looking, for, if, you're looking if you have a whole of bullish outlook, that is what you want to see, uh, positive momentum increasing while prices are increasing at the same time. Now turning attention to what's going on in the commodities market. Uh, like, like I mentioned at the very beginning, gold had a good bounce uh, given uh, the, the move that we saw in the US dollar on Friday because of the weak CPI numbers and also the weak retail sales numbers really um, pushes back the likelihood of a rate rise from the United States. It's somewhere in around 47% chance of a rate hike from the, from the Fed Reserve in December. And even though we did see gold has quite a, quite a poor run for this, effectively a month here, uh, from basically early June to early July, but we did see the market turn around. Um, we're now trading pretty much on the 200-day moving average. It, 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 tr it traded through it on the Friday. We're now pretty much uh, testing it yet again. If we get a, a, a if we have a d decisive move beyond and north of the 200-day moving average, we'll then be looking for this price action here in around the 12.47, where both the 50-day moving average and the 100-day moving average converge with each other. Should the 200-day the, the moving average uh, continue to be, as has been in the past, an area of resistance for any upward moves, should uh, the 200-day moving average block a rally in gold, we could see a return to the 12.20, 12.15 region. And, and, and should we move south to 12.15, the, uh, the July low of 12.05 will be the area to keep an eye on next. Uh, in terms of the oil market, um, every single Friday at 6 p.m. we have the Baker Hughes active rig count uh, from, the, from the United States. And the number of active rigs increased by two uh, on, on Friday just gone. Uh, it is a, it's not, it's, in, the last, in the last year or so, the number of active rigs in the United, in the United States has more than doubled. And it was only a number of weeks ago we actually had a, a, a ever so slight decline in, act, in active rigs. But by and large, it's been very much to the upside in terms of the actual number of active rigs in the United States. Uh, we appear to be testing the 50-day moving average yet again uh, in the price of uh, Brent crude, which, which we're looking at here. Uh, we're pretty much right on it right now at $48.80. Should we take off that level? Uh, if we, the first time we traded north of it, and we, and we, and we, held, we traded well above it uh, in about five or six weeks. And then, of course, should we move, move north of the 50 moving average at $48.80? Psychological $50 per barrel will be the next level to keep an eye on. If you look here, we can see that the positive momentum indicator has very much matched what we saw in the price in the actual uh, oil market itself the price rallied here after a severe sell-off from late may until the 
middle of mi middle of and, and late J June. We also saw the price momentum increasing, and then we saw a bit of a pullback here. We, we saw a decent enough retracement here, and then now we're looking. It would appear that we're looking to, to have another push 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 higher in the price of oil. But the big question is, can we take out this 50-day moving average? Should we see a failure to, to take out that level? That would just be a classic example of a higher of a higher high and lower lows that, we, that we've basically seen the oil market in for some time now. So should we see a failure to clear the 50-day moving average in around 48.80? Traders will then be looking towards the the low we saw only not only about a week or 10 days ago at 46 dollars, and this price action here, and then below that 44.26. But like I said. If we do move north of it and we do get a decisive break north of the 50-day moving average, that's going that that's going to be uh, proved to be significant, seeing as we had a couple of failed attempts uh, at the very beginning of the month. And then of course we'll be looking towards the psychological 50 bucks per barrel, and then we'll be looking towards the 100-day moving average at $50.87. That's on Brent crude oil. Let's turn our attention now to WTI. Uh, we're going to be very similar share, but obviously the prices itself are going to be different. Just wait for it to update now. Very similar position. We're actually trading ever so. We've actually traded north of the 50-day moving average, which is obviously going to be something uh, traders are going to be looking out for. Are we going to get a breakout? Um, and is this is this move here that we witnessed actually the beginning of a, of a is this just a pause in a larger correction that we're going to see or is this going to actually be yet another attempt to try and cr create uh, this is going to be a failed attempt on the 50 moving average only to move lower on the session so this, this price action that we're keeping an eye on is the 50 moving average is in around the 46 dollars and 50 cent region and should it do move beyond that we then be looking towards the recent high, the July high of $47.18. And then we're we'll looking toward this price action here of $48.18. But that's all dependent should we actually break north of the 50 day moving average in the first place. A failure to break north of the 50 day moving average could end up sending the, the oil market back towards $44.93. Then the buyers and sellers are looking towards $43.56. And then below that again, the 2017 low of 41.84. Let's now have a look at what's going on in the single currency versus the greenback. The euro did very well last week on the back of the uh, soft economic indicators out of the United States uh, on Friday. It pushed higher, but we have given 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 back some of the gains that were that were made. But it isn't the end of the world, seeing that the single currency has been in a fairly uh, clear and concise upward trend uh, for the last, well, for the, for the last um, going on seven months. If you take a look here, the, the high that was printed um, uh, just recently, um, just last, well, last week, last Friday, uh, was actually the highest level the euro has been against the US dollar since May last year. So, so quite a significant level. Uh, just goes to show you how much ground the single currency has, has been has been has been made up, and if anything, it's quite a clear bullish signal. Even though we've seen a bit of a pullback today, the outlook for the single currency is still is is still quite positive. So similar to what we've seen in some of the U.S. equity markets, buying on the dip has proved to be the kind of popular strategy for the euro versus the U.S. dollar. So one the resistance at 114.95 and then 115 itself. And then beyond that, 116, there are the levels we're going to be watching out for to the upside. But should we see any moves lower in the single currency, we're going to support it. It's going to come into, into, into play in this region here, the 114, and also at 113.75. And then should you move south of that, we will be looking towards 113. These are the areas, we, if we do see a pullback, these are the price areas we could see a pullback to before we maybe potentially see another move higher. I will say this though, it is ever so slightly concerning that we are seeing a bit of a dwindling off in the positive momentum. It could be a sign that the market is in is in uh, is in line for a potentially a, a large-ish retracement re retracement. The price is the most important indicator. So while the price is going higher, that's where you should be taking your uh, indicators and your leads from. But when you have higher price, when you've when, you've, when a market is going on hitting multi-month highs. 
uh, or our new highs for the year while momentum is clearly running out it could give the indication that that the, the the bullish run that we have is running out a bit of steam now that could lead to a pause before another increase in momentum and another increase in buying in, in a buying spree or it could be the sign that we're in for a sizable or decent size retracement so should we see it further moves lower uh, on the euro versus the us dollar i will keep an eye off at this price region here this level the 50 day moving average in the 12 region Turning attention now to the pound versus US dollar, the pound between the, some of the hawkish commentary you've heard out of the likes of Ian McCafferty, uh, and also given that given the actual poor uh, CPI numbers from the United States uh, just gone, it's it's all the pound has also been gaining its ground versus the US dollar. So this this, this price action here, 131.20, that's going to be the next level to watch out for to the upside. And then beyond that, bulls and buyers will be looking towards the 132 reason, region. Should we see any kind of uh, pullbacks in the cable, uh, the pound versus the US dollar? We could expect to see some pullbacks towards this region, the 103, 130.65 um, region. Then, of course, 130 itself, and then 129.77. And should we see quite a large uh, pullback? We could even trade back towards the 50-day moving average at 128.78. Euro sterling now, obviously going to be one to keep an eye on this week. Uh, we, we, we have an update from uh, Mark Kearney, and we also have the all-important uh, ECB uh, conference on Wednesday. So. By and large, over the last number of months, we've seen a fairly up decisive upward move in the euro versus the pound, uh, but, but we have managed to kind of pull back uh, some of some of the uh, some of the gains as the single currency has made versus sterling recently. It's been a fairly sharp sell-off, and combined with that sharp sell-off, we've also seen an increase in negative momentum. Um, so, seeing as negative momentum is actually on the increase, we could see a continuation of this downward move. What to watch out for this this price action here of 87.38 the low here uh, which you're referring to in, in the middle of june that's going to be an area to keep an eye on and should we move south of that we're then looking towards the 50 day moving average at 87.18 and then of course 87 the number itself should you go south of 87 i would then, then be turning my attention to this price here at 86.54 upside moves Obviously, some of the targets that we've hit on on the way up at 88.80, and then of course uh, this price at this price here, which comes to play at 89.50, let's call it. Dollar yen is going to be an important one to watch out for, uh, given that traders seem to have less and less confidence that the United States is going to be having another interest rate rise in 2017, and also we do have an update from the Bank of Japan. This price action here, we have been, we have been broadly been, been, been moving higher uh, in the, the, the US dollar versus the Japanese yen. But at the same time, given the, the disappointing numbers out of the United States, it's no surprise that we did see a sell off at the back end of last week. And we actually, not only did we actually give up all the positive momentum, we actually swung to negative momentum. And seeing as negative momentum is on the increase out, uh, on, this, on, on looking at this chart here, we could see a pullback, a push, we, we could see a move lower towards uh well where a lot of the moving averages are converging uh both the 50 100 and 200 which is a sign of a market being sort of in sort of a market kind of unsure of itself in which particular direction it's going a lot of consolidation a lot of indecision and what we're seeing is that that has been reflected in the moving averages all in, quite quite um pretty much on top of each other in around the 1 1 11 81 to kind of 85 price action so as we've been, as we were now recently swung from negative terror, negative momentum, uh, we could actually see continuation of the, of the quite aggressive downward move that we've been in uh, over the last week. So the the target for that is going to be, going to be 111.81. This is where the 200 day moving average comes into play. We could see a pullback towards that. If we do happen to actually break south of that, obviously 111 itself is going to be the next price action to, to watch out for, and then 110.30. If we do see any rallies in the dollar versus the Japanese yen, 
we may be looking toward this price action here uh, which comes into play at 113.53 and then beyond that the, the, uh, this high here that was created uh, last week uh, and the price for that is just shy of 111.50 111 sorry 114.49 The Australian dollar, as what we'll we, we have a look at now, the Aussie dollar did, did obviously quite well, both out of the dis disappointing numbers from, from, from the United States on Friday, and on top of that, the actual um, growth numbers from China over the weekend. So as you can see here, this is a, this is a, uh, a four-hour chart I'm looking at here on the Australian dollar versus the US dollar. It's been very much in an upward trend. Uh, it's likely, given that we've seen such a kind of a bullish move over the last number of months, uh, it's likely that we, that we could see a continuation. It's a classic example of a upward trend, higher highs, higher lows, and the market pushes on to a multi-month high, pulls back to previous uh, resistance, current, now new support levels, only to push on higher yet again. So we, 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 it's, it's fair to say, in terms of, it's, it's, as seeing as it's a big number, uh, uh, 78 is obviously acting as support for the Australian dollar versus the US dollar and they're obviously going to be looking north towards 79 and 80 on that. It is, again, it is a bit worrying though that we are seeing a slight curtailing of positive momentum. Uh, we, we've seen this before on, on our previous chart. It is just a bit worrying, I believe it was euro dollar we saw that on, it is a bit worrying when prices go on to hit multi-week highs or multi-month highs and at the same time the actual rate at which uh, the momentum is increasing, is slowing down, which could suggest that we could be in for a bit of a larger than expected retracement. Um, seeing as uh, we've had quite a large move here, we should we move below 78, we could then be looking back towards this price action here of around 77.50 or maybe even 77 itself. But the picture for the last number of months has been, has been very much to the upside when it comes to the Australian dollar. So I think the overriding wider trend is going to be the one that's, that's going to be in play it's just a possibility that we could see a larger than expected return uh, retracing rather uh, in terms of the the next speaking of commodity currencies having a look now to the US dollar versus the Canadian dollar and this has had just quite a tremendous run uh, to a tremendous southbound run very uh, recently um, we are currently trading at 126.66 uh, on the dollar CAD, it's been quite a decisive and very clear cut uh, move to the downside. This is just a classic example of the market trending lower. After the, the May high, pulls back here, creates a new low, pull, 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 uh, has a retracement, new low, pulls back to, to the 200 day moving average, and then just keeps on pushing lower and lower. If anything, I can say about this chart, it's actually fairly. Uh, not only is it very decisive that, it, that it's, a, it's, a, it's a downward move that we're looking at, on some occasions when we have pulled back, we haven't even actually pulled back that much before we actually uh, had, the, had the next move lower. In terms of actually price action to watch out for, I think uh, the, the popular strategy in this move here has been selling the rallies. What to watch out for here uh, in terms of actual uh, levels? Obviously, the, the market has been moving uh, to, to the south. But should you see any rallies back to back to this um, this support level here, which is currently now active as acting as resistance, which comes into play at 126.80, that's going to be a region to watch out for uh, as a potential area should, uh, for resistance. Should this currency manage to pull back some of the losses that it has, also this region here at 127.63, then we'll be looking towards uh, the 128. 20 region uh, which is actually the low from September last year and then of course we're looking towards 129 and 130 to the downside 126 is obviously going to be the next level to watch out for in terms of big psychological numbers and then bears and sellers will be looking towards the 125 region now I'm aware now that the, that the time has gone um, 12.53 so we've now gone uh, eight minutes past um, eight minutes over time but to be fair I did end up starting about three minutes late so we're really only only five minutes over the time uh, since we actually began um, this webinar. Um, before I sign off are there any markets you guys would like me to cover uh, before we actually wrap up things with this particular webinar? 
Aussie CAD, please. Absolutely. Um, while I'm bringing up the Australian CAD, if there are any other markets you would like me to have a look at, uh, feel free to just uh, stick them in the box right now and I have it nicely lined up for when I go cover the Australian dollar versus the Canadian dollar. Products, currencies. Top of the list, Aussie CAD. So over the last number of months on the Australian CAD, um, even though we have seen a trade in a bit of a range throughout 2017, sort of 96 to the low and 103 to the top, uh, top of the range. It would appear that we are that we uh, that, we, that we have been moving um, towards the south over the last number of trading sessions. That being said, over the last number of months we have been moving south. But that being said, we've actually also seen a decline. Apologies about that. We've also seen a, a decline in negative momentum. We've actually now actually swung to the positive momentum uh, for the first time not seen since early to mid June. So seeing as we have quite a large snapback here on the Aussie versus the Canadian dollar, bearing in mind uh, the Aussie dollar has had a great run versus the US dollar. Also bearing in mind the Canadian dollar has also had a great run versus the US dollar, both of which gains substantially. I would say looking at this, given that we, given the move from early May, the move is very much, the last, the last number of months has been very much to the downside. Uh, but I am, I am a bit sceptical that we have seen a, a decline in positive momentum and then actually a change in positive, negative momentum. So the, the, for me, the, the, this isn't, isn't, isn't as clear cut as I would like. Um, what I will say about this, though, is that if you look at it from, from, the, from the, kind of the kind of selling point of view, it has been making a fairly kind of clear and concise moves lower, rallies back, takes out, takes out, creates a new 2017 low, pushes back up again. This price action here, if we're not too far away from the moment, this region between at a between at one and well, be, well at a hundred, whichever we want to place a decimal place, either at a hundred or this 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 region here uh, around ninety nine sixty. This is going to be a very in interesting level. Uh, if we can manage to break north of that, we'll then be looking towards potentially looking towards heading back up towards the two day moving average at uh, at a, at a hundred and thirty two. And then beyond that, 190 at the 100 day moving average. And then, of course, you'll be looking towards 102, the figure. Uh, if you're interested to see how 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 this pans out uh, regarding the, the you're going to change in momentum, while, like I say, this is an example of this is why I use the momentum indicator. The price is the most important indicator, and, and the market is pushing lower here, which the price is, if, whatever the price is doing, that's really what you're paying most attention to. Price is moving lower, so your the, the so the outlook is going to remain negative. But as you can see here, all the while price is moving lower, the momentum was actually declining, which would suggest that's kind of running out of steam. And when it runs out of steam, that's when you can look at a turnaround, and you have to determine is this a genuine turnaround in the overall market, or more, is it more likely to be just a turnaround in an, in terms of an actual correction? And seeing as of that, basically two or three months. The market has been to the downside. We could be looking at a substantial correction before potentially another move lower. Uh, so this this region here of 96, this uh, 9960 200, this is going to be quite an important region here. We're just north of 99 itself at the moment. If we could see a, seeing as momentum has just swung to the positive, we could head back up towards 100 or the 100 day move opportunity moving average at 130. But it would be interesting to see if that, if that is then carried on. Obviously, we need to see a, a decisive move north of the 200-day moving average before we can actually contemplate, is this, going to be a, is this going to be a more bullish run or is this going to be a large retracement of the wider downward move before we head south again? Should we head south again, we'll be looking towards 98, this level here, at this low here at 97.36, and then 97, the figure itself. And then north, south of 97, this level here at 96. Uh, New Zealand dollar versus the US dollar. 
I'll just scroll all the way down through the uh, very different currency pairs to find the New Zealand dollar versus the US dollar. Like I said, and if there's any other markets you would like for me to have a look at, and I'm aware that the time is coming up on one o'clock now. Any other markets you would like me to have a look at, feel free to uh, chuck it in the box and I'll have a look at that just after I finish up with the, with the Kiwi US dollar. Well, the wider move has been uh, largely one of kind of range-bound trading here, but uh, it's, it's it's interesting to see they've actually managed to kind of go on and create a, a new a new low in 2017. But then after that, it has managed to actually nearly exceed the um the 2017 high. So it looks like should be it looks like we're at a quite a quite a significant level here. Um, just want to see if it's been taken out. 73.75 was the high there in February. I know it got very close to it, but the other day it was 73. It didn't actually quite get there. It got as high as 73.68. So we're only not, not too far away from the February high. A move here north of the February high, the 2017 high at 73.75. That's, that's going to be a big level to watch out for. If you, if you take off that, it will create a new 2017 high. And then we're looking towards a November high. Which is just in around this kind of 74 region. 74.03 would then be the next price to watch out for. This is precisely why I like to kind of look at the uh, kind of uh, MACD histogram, the kind of momentum indicators down here. We can see a very sharp move to the upside in the New Zealand dollar versus the US dollar. I can see it's reflected in the kind of in the increase in, uh, in positive momentum all along. Worrying enough sign that the price continues to create um, new multi-week highs, all the while the actual momentum indicator is, is showing that momentum, positive momentum, is declining. It even slides negative, and the prices still continue to go. So, like I said, price is most important indicator to watch out for, but you've got to be aware of other, other other indicators as well. Seeing as momentum leads price, I like to look at the momentum. At the momentum. And what do we get after that major move here? From in around 86 up to 73, a 500 pip move. What do we see here? We see we see the price give way back up to fall back to 72. So this is this all this this area here was a kind of a, an early warning sign that the price moving higher, which is great if you're long. But guess what? We may be seeing a some sort of a correction in the offing. And besides what we did, so we traded north. Of 73 and we pull back towards 72, take out the the recent high, and now we're looking at we're testing the February the high of 2017. Given that momentum that negative momentum is decreasing, dare I say we could potentially see further declines in negative momentum and actually possibly a swing to positive momentum. And seeing as that we're actually very much testing the uh, the, the the 2017 high, that's that's they're the levels we, we should be watching out for to the upside. This level here um, at 73.75 and then going beyond that, we then be looking toward this price here, which is basically at 74 for the um, New Zealand dollar versus US dollar. Uh, last but not least, we got the Canadian dollar versus the Japanese yen. I'm afraid just because we've gone just past one o'clock, uh, we're now probably 45 minutes running for a 30 minute uh, webinar. I will have to make the Canadian dollar versus the Japanese yen the last one we are looking at for the webinar. It is the CAD top of the list. The CAD yen. Knock off that. Uh, 
So the really kind of wider trend has been late 2014 until late 2016 has been very much clearly to the downside. Uh, we have seen kind of, we have seen signs of it uh, turning around and pushing higher. It's encouraging to see that we managed to take out. Uh, we nearly take out or did it, it did it at all. Traded right up to this this region here. Uh, we'll look here from April 24th, 2016. 88, 80 was the high. What do we get here in late December? 88, 90. So we did manage to take out that high, only to, to only to actually have a retracement back to this price area here. So once again, that level of um, which we're not too far away from 88, 92. That's going to be an area to keep an eye on, seeing as we're currently at 88.75. We're only about 50 pips away from that price action, which also co coincides not too far away with the 200-week moving average at 90.32. Given that, um, given that we've had quite a quite a decent, well, quite a major sell-off, we are seeing pushing back higher here. It looks it appears to be more in, in sort of turnaround territory rather than a pause before the next leg lower it's also reflected in the actual momentum the price is moving higher the momentum is moving higher we see a turnaround in price action here we can see an increase in negative momentum to the downside the momentum it sort of trades sideways in this time period here not a whole lot of a trading range going on all the while negative momentum is, de is decreasing then a swing to the positive and then we're looking to actually Break higher of the one, the 100 week moving average, and now look now it would appear that we could be testing the 200 200 week moving average in the in the not too distant future. So I think given that we're seeing on the weekly chart, I think it's fair to say that we will, we could be looking we could see a continuation of these gains uh, on the Canadian dollar versus the Japanese yen in the more shorter term on the daily chart. Notice how the price is pushing higher. And while the momentum is do is start, positive momentum is starting to decline, so we could see. I think I think the picture is still to the upside for the Canadian dollar versus the yen. It just means that the retracement that we do see on this upward move here from 81 uh, up north of 89, that 800 pip move, we could see a retracement somewhere back in towards the kind of 87 region, or we could see retracement back to this area here of 85 before having an, uh, a, a, a push higher. Uh, I think that the, the outlook for, for this is, is still to the upside. I'd, I'm just a bit concerned that what we are seeing here is a bit of a decline of positive momentum, which could lead to a more sizable uh, retracement uh, than, 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 we, than we've previously seen. So I'll keep an eye on 87, and then also and I'll keep an eye on 85 to the downside. Um, I just want to thank you very much for, uh, for, for tuning in to our uh, webinar. Um, you are very welcome, um, Michael. You're, you're very welcome indeed. We're obviously going to be having this webinar next Monday at 12:15. Um, I, I, I talk about it every single week, and I'm sure you're you're, you're aware of it already. Uh, but just in case if you're not, just things to keep an eye on throughout the trading session. Uh, we obviously have under market pulse. We have the economic calendar to watch out for. It'll give you a breakdown of all the major economic events going on throughout the week. You can click here through it day by day and give you a breakdown of the previous economic indicator and also what the forecast uh, for the particular announcement is. This here, the chart for myself and the other, other analysts around the world, uh, do updates daily, several times a day on the chart forum. So the major markets, we will end up, we will end up writing so, uh, some uh, short analysis of what we think is going on in the chart forum. The chart forum can also be found under Market Pulse. Click on Market Pulse and then a uh, third one down is the chat forum itself insights is also what i want to talk about updates that we do uh if we're promoting uh webinars or if we're doing updates updates on the day uh what's going on in terms of important news and also events keep an eye on insights because that gets updated several times a day throughout the world across here at cmc markets and obviously for news flow itself the road to feed that we that we have access to seeing as we're account holders at cmc markets and keep an eye on what's going on in terms of actually the major news flows from that. Also, before we do we do finish up, uh, I do want to point out that there is a, another webinar with uh, which is being hosted uh, later on tonight. Uh, it's on in the same place where you found this one here. Uh, it, it is the Trader Development Program Part Three, uh, the Trader's Mindset. You can sign up in the same place where you signed up for this current webinar. Uh, it's going to be tonight, Monday the 17th, starting at 19.30.
half seven British summer time. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the webinar and have a good trading week. This is, thank, this is, this is That's all for me from David Madden at CMC Markets. Thank you.